So picture this. It's early evening and you have had a long day. You're stressed and tired, but glad you'll finally get a few hours to relax before bed. You position yourself in front of the TV, maybe the living room fireplace to read a book. But right in the middle of a story, you burst into flames. Doesn't sound fun, does it? Some people believe this exact thing has happened hundreds, maybe even thousands of times throughout human history. Let's talk about the phenomena known as spontaneous human combustion. So to start off, what exactly is spontaneous human combustion? Let's go to Wikipedia to find out. I know Wikipedia isn't the most reliable source, but they did have the most succinct definition I could find. Spontaneous human combustion, or SHC, is the concept of the combustion of a living or recently deceased human body without an apparent external source of ignition. By the way, I will be calling it SHC throughout most of this video because that's a lot easier to say. Spontaneous combustion actually does happen with inanimate objects such as rags soaked in oil, hot laundry, or moist hay. It is a scientifically proven thing and the cause of about 14,000 fires every year. But can this occur in humans? Let's find out. There are estimates all over the place as to just how many times this has happened throughout history. Some were as low as 200, while other sources said it could have happened thousands of times. I'm going to cover a few of the more notable cases here just so you can get an idea of what usually goes on in these scenarios. Just a heads up though, some of these cases are really old and it was hard to find reliable sources of information, so just keep that in mind for the first few cases. The earliest source I could find on SHC was from a Danish anatomist named Thomas Bartholin. In 1641, Bartholin wrote about an Italian knight named Palomus Vorstitus, who died in 1470 after drinking wine and then subsequently vomiting flames before bursting into them. In 1663, Bartholin gave another alleged account of SHC. This one happened in 1470 to a Parisian woman who burned to death on the straw mat she was sleeping on. The straw mat had no damage. There was another similar incident in Paris in 1725 where a woman burned to death either on her straw mat or in her kitchen. Her husband was actually convicted of her murder, but later on he won his appeal by saying he committed the crime due to a visitation from God. 1731 brought another reported case of SHC out of Italy. One night in March of that year, 62-year-old Countess Cornelia Bandy went to bed as usual. The next morning, the Countess's maid was confused when she didn't wake up at her normal time. When the maid went into the Countess's room to check on her, all she found were a heap of ashes and two legs on the bed. The next major case I want to talk about doesn't happen until 1885. On Christmas Eve, Matilda Rooney caught fire in the kitchen of her home in Illinois. Her entire body was completely burned, except for her feet. The body of Matilda's husband, Patrick, was found in another room of the house. He had suffocated from the fumes. Investigators were baffled. There were no signs of foul play, and other than the bodies, nothing unusual was found in the home. Even the kitchen where Matilda died had no fire damage. One of the most well-known cases of alleged SHC is Mary Reeser. On the night of July 1st, 1951, her son and granddaughter visited her at her home in St. Petersburg, Florida. They left her sitting in her armchair, having taken two sleeping pills and apparently looking forward to a relaxing night. But the next morning, her body was found by her landlady. All that was left of her were her feet, a charred skull, and a pile of ashes where her armchair had been. Several items in the room were sent to the FBI for further testing. No substances that could have started the fire were found on them. Her death was determined to be accidental by fire of unknown origin. A few years later, in 1966, the body of 92-year-old Dr. John Irving Bentley was found in the bathroom of his Pennsylvania home. 
The body was found by a meter reader. Most of his remains were found in the bathtub, but one of his feet and part of a leg were found elsewhere in the home. I couldn't figure out exactly where. The fire had burned a hole in the wooden floor, but there was no other fire damage in the house. At 9.30 a.m. on March 27, 1970, the body of 89-year-old Margaret Hogan was found burned to death in an armchair at her home in Dublin, Ireland. There was no other fire damage to the house. Her cause of death was listed as burning, but the cause of the fire couldn't be determined. There was speculation that she had been struck by lightning or even committed suicide. Connor Brady, a then reporter for the Irish Times, thought Margaret's death might be a result of SHC, but faced resistance from the higher-ups when trying to report it. The coroner said her death would conform to what is called spontaneous combustion. In 1982, 61-year-old Jeannie Saffin was sitting with her elderly father at their home in London when her upper body burst into flames. The wooden chair she'd been sitting in was undamaged. Jeannie was taken to the hospital, but sadly later died from third-degree burns. Her death was listed as bronchopneumonia due to burns. Just like Margaret Hogan, one of the more recent alleged cases of SHC comes out of Ireland. In 2010, 76-year-old Michael Faherty died at his home in Galway. His body was found burned and near a fireplace. The ceiling above the fireplace was charred and the floor was burned. Nothing else in the house was damaged at all. There were no traces of any accelerants found in the home, and the fireplace wasn't thought to be linked to his death. The coroner controversially listed his cause of death as spontaneous combustion. So those are a few of the more well-known cases. But were these people's deaths really caused by bursting into flames randomly? Well, it's not very likely. The human body is about 70% water, and the only flammable things in it are fat tissue and methane. So let's go over some of the more scientific theories for this phenomenon. One theory is that SHC is actually caused by a buildup of methane in the body. The idea is that methane slowly builds up more and more over time, especially due to overconsumptions of food like beans, and it eventually catches fire inside the human body. But it happens so slowly, the person doesn't even realize it and will slowly burn from the inside out. Now this does sound a little bit far-fetched, but there is another issue with it. Cows produce far more methane than humans. This is probably why you see calls for cow fart regulations every now and then. But there are no documented cases of spontaneous combustion in cows. Another theory is acetone. Acetone can be synthetically produced and is most notably found in nail polish remover. Yeah, first ingredient is acetone. I know you won't be able to see it, but it's there. But it is also naturally occurring and can be found in things like plants, gases, and yes, fires. There are also small amounts in the human body. When your body isn't getting a lot of fat, like when you're on certain types of diets, your liver breaks down fatty acids for energy. This process produces ketones in a process called ketosis. One of these ketones is acetone. In fact, people on the keto diet have more acetone in their bodies than usual, since this ketosis process is the entire purpose of the diet. This applies to people on other low-fat diets as well, or to people who are fasting. A biologist named Brian J. Ford has extensively studied SHC and might have provided evidence to this theory. In one experiment, he soaked pork tissue in ethanol for a week, but it wouldn't burn. Then he soaked pork tissue in acetone. It burned to ash within half an hour, but the legs remained just like in SHC cases. The next theory is excessive alcohol consumption. The idea is that when someone drinks a lot, the alcohol in their body will make it more flammable. But this isn't very likely either. Even if you were really drunk, 
there still wouldn't be enough alcohol in your body to actually make it flammable. So you would need some other type of ignition. However, alcohol might be a factor in some of these deaths. Because the victim is drunk, they're not thinking clearly and might not react to a developing fire right away. But what seems to be the most accepted theory is that there's another source of ignition nearby that actually causes the fire. Many of these victims are found close to a fire source, such as a fireplace or cigarettes. In the case of Michael Faherty, the fireplace was not thought to be linked to his death by investigators, but skeptics think that embers from the fireplace actually started the fire. As a retired pathology professor Mike Green puts it, there is a source of ignition somewhere, but because the body is so badly destroyed, the source can't be found. Many SHC victims were also smokers and were thought to have fallen asleep while smoking. This was thought to be the case with both Mary Reeser and Dr. John Irving Bentley. In the case of Jeannie Saffin, skeptics think the fire might have been caused by an ember from her dad's pipe. On the surface, this does seem a little crazy. You'd think you would wake up if you were on fire. Then again, I've slept through literal fire alarms before, so I guess it's possible. In fact, smoking is the leading cause of fatal fires in the United States. Most people who died in these fires were in the same room when the fire started and couldn't escape, maybe because they were asleep or because they were impaired by drugs, alcohol, disability, or old age. So we've covered possible explanations for people accidentally being set on fire. But what about the other strange things found at the scenes? Why are these bodies found almost entirely burned to ashes, but their feet and most of their surroundings are spared? This could be explained by something known as the wick effect. This is a candle. It's got a wick in the middle, and the wick is surrounded by flammable fatty acids. I also just accidentally broke off part of the wick right before I started filming this, so it might be a little harder to see than I hoped. Sorry. When you light the wick, the wax and fatty acids surrounding it keep the candle burning. According to the wick effect, when a human body is set on fire, it acts like the outside of a candle and keeps burning. The person's clothes or hair usually act as the wick, soaking up melted fat and causing the person's body to smolder. The wick effect would explain a lot of these unusual circumstances. Many of the victims had their feet spared because there's not as much fat there for the fire to catch on to and burn. It could also explain why the victims are almost entirely reduced to ash while the rest of their surroundings are mostly undamaged. Because the victim's body was fueling the fire, it just keeps going until it burns out naturally as most fires do. But of course, the fire never gets as far as the rest of the room. In 1998, an experiment was conducted on the British TV show QED. Fire experts took a pig carcass wrapped in cloth and poured petrol on it, or gas for those of us in the U.S. Different sources said different things about how the experiment actually went. According to the BBC, the carcass burned for about five hours, and the results were similar to those in SHC cases. And other than a melted TV set, the rest of the set wasn't damaged. But according to Brian J. Ford, who did the acetone experiment we discussed earlier, the experiment was supposed to take five hours, but actually took eight. And even then, the pig's body still wasn't completely burned. Experts on the show also burned a chair for six hours in a chamber. By the end, it was significantly damaged, but still mostly intact. Most sources I looked into that mentioned this chair agreed that chairs and human bodies aren't really comparable anyway. Another experiment was conducted the same year in California. This one involved multiple different scenarios, some involving pig carcasses as well as some fabrics. The experts who conducted it concluded that animal fat can contribute to the fuel of a compartment fire. By the way, pigs are often used in these experiments because pig fat and human fat are pretty similar. So I assume the conclusion is that the same thing would happen to a human body. The scientific community in general doesn't seem to believe in SHC. According to LiveScience.com, 
If people truly could suddenly burst into flames without being anywhere near an open flame, presumably there would be examples that have occurred while the victim was swimming in a bathtub or even scuba diving. Yet these cases do not exist. Mike Green, the retired pathology professor, put it this way, I think if the heavens were striking in cases of spontaneous combustion, then there would be a lot more cases. I go for the practical, the mundane explanation. Before we go on, I want to mention a couple of cases that took place in the past decade and didn't really feel like they fit in with the other cases. In both these cases, the victims at least appeared to survive. In 2013, a baby boy in India burst into flames on four separate occasions. This began when he was just nine days old and kept going for about two months. The baby boy's mother took him to the doctor right away, but doctors weren't immediately able to figure out what was going on. Finally, they told the boy's parents to dress him in cotton clothing and keep him hydrated and near air conditioning. After that, the fire stopped. But two years later, the same boy's parents returned to the doctor with another baby boy experiencing the same problem. Again, this started when the baby was just nine days old. Both of these babies have burns on their body, but as far as I know, are still alive. This was under investigation as of 2015, but I couldn't find any more recent updates on it. Their parents were kicked out of their village after the incident with their first child because people thought they did it on purpose. Doctors have theorized Munchausen by proxy. I've mentioned Munchausen by proxy on this channel before, but if you don't know, Munchausen by proxy is a psychological disorder in which caregivers, usually mothers, exaggerate or lie about symptoms of the person in their care or sometimes even hurt them usually for sympathy and attention. It's also been theorized that these spontaneous combustions were actually caused by buildings in the area being built with phosphorus, which is highly flammable. The next case and the most recent one I could find was also from 2015. A woman thought to be in her 40s burst into flames while sitting on a park bench in Flensburg, Germany. She was taken to the hospital and was in critical condition, but again, I couldn't find any more updates about this. I assume she survived. Investigators at the time thought it might have been a suicide attempt. So, unsurprisingly, spontaneous human combustion has been talked about quite a bit in the media. The most notable instance was in Charles Dickens' novel Bleak House, which was published in installments between 1852 and 1853. One of the characters, a merchant named Crook, yes, that is his real name, bursts into flames and dies. After the book was published, Dickens was criticized for legitimizing SHC when it didn't exist. In response, he wrote any preface to the book in which he gave several historical accounts where SHC had allegedly taken place. One of the examples he used was of the Countess Cornelia Bandy, though he referred to her as Countess Cornelia de Baudi Cessinet, which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly. It's been speculated that Dickens was actually inspired by the Countess's death when writing the novel. A reviewer on the Goodreads page of a book called Jacob Faithful said Dickens was actually inspired by that story in which the titular protagonist's mother is a victim of SHC. I'm not sure if this is true, but since Jacob Faithful was published in 1834, just before Bleak House, it wouldn't be surprising. Frankly, I'm not sure why people were criticizing Dickens for writing about spontaneous human combustion when he'd written about literal ghosts before this. Maybe it's because the rest of Bleak House's story wasn't supposed to be supernatural. Or maybe he did state that he thought SHC was real before he wrote the book. At the time Bleak House was written, many people clearly didn't believe SHC was real, but some did. At the time, Dickens' home country of England, as well as several others, were in the midst of the temperance movement, which sought to extremely limit and eventually stop the consumption of alcohol. In the United States, this movement would eventually lead to prohibition, which lasted from 1920 to 1933. 
Dickens's contemporaries who did believe in SHC thought it was caused by excessive alcohol consumption or even alcoholism. They also saw it as retribution for sins like alcoholism. Other more modern examples of SHC in the media are the mockumentary This Is Spinal Tap, in which one of the band's drummers bursts into flames during a show and the video game Parasite Eve, in which the main character, Aya, is watching an opera when the performers burst into flames in front of the audience. I can't talk about SHC in the media without mentioning the book A Blaze, Spontaneous Human Combustion by Larry E. Arnold. The book details different alleged SHC cases throughout history, including several of the ones we've talked about here, and attempts to offer up an explanation. This book was published in 1995 and is brought up quite a bit in SHC sources, mostly by skeptics. I haven't read the book. From what I understand, not all of his explanations are scientific, so take both the book and its criticisms with a grain of salt. I just wanted to mention it here because I saw it mentioned in so many other places. If you want to check it out for yourself, I will leave a link below. So that's all I have for you today on spontaneous human combustion. Frankly, I'm really glad this is one paranormal phenomenon that doesn't seem to actually exist. I can't imagine how horrible it must be to have suffered this fate, or to be a loved one of someone who did. So, with the risk of sounding like a mom, please be careful around fire and cigarettes. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and share it. And for more dark content, I hope you'll consider subscribing and hitting the bell. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.